in the ant room. Wallahi, laysa ma ra'ayta kamal tazum. Not every time what you see is what it may be. So, iyaka wa dhan. Iyaka wa dhan. Repent to Allah of your mistakes. Concentrate on it rather than concentrating on others. However, there are few times where it is justified for you, not in the sense of doing giba, but to talk about others for reasons. Some of those are such as when you go to lodge a complaint to the judge as a defendant or as those who go and complain in whichever way it is. You, have, you are allowed to mention about others what is needed there. <coughs> also, if you seek help, to, to seek help which will prevent a person from continuing to commit a certain sin. So if somebody is doing a sin and you need support from somebody to go and stop those kind of things, that is when you are allowed to tell that person this, 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 but you should know, not that you know that the suitable person is flawed, you go to every Tom, Dick and Harry, and then once they say, keep everybody saying, go to flan, go to flan, go to flan, after you share it with 30 people, then you come to flan, which you were supposed to in the beginning, this is very important, that before sharing that information, you should know, is that person the right one and the most equipped to do it, or should it be going to somebody else? Among those, when you are seeking advice from a Muslim scholar, where you may need to disclose, if not entirely everything, then what is related to that particular issue. And, of course, at the time when you need to warn others, possibly, of a particular person who is such a, uh, like a person who is a bandit, a burglar, a thief, um, a pro, uh, in these kind of things where he steals from people, he commits uh, many kinds of crimes and you need, to, uh, you need the society to know about this kind of individual, then it may be important for you to mention it publicly. These are among those where it is allowed. Brothers and sisters, after speaking about this, I really have no power left in me to mention some of these things which are happening in our society, in our masjid, in our community, amongst us as brothers and sisters. My strength is all gone. By Allah, I thought to mention it in, in general so that we are more awake. But I think this as a message is enough that many of us, most of us, either are offenders or victims, sometime or other. So let us be among those who Instead of pointing fingers, forget about whom I have said. When, when I was talking about it, how many of you thought, ah, Fulan has said about me this, Fulan has said about this. And how many of you thought, ah, oh, Staffirullah, I said Fulan, about Fulan this, I said about Fulan this. If you are the later, then fika khairun kathir. You have lots of khair in, it, in you because that is what I have been driving, that look at yourself. Where are those places where you have made those mistakes? <coughs> Accept it in yourself. Forget about others. Forget about what others have done. You think of yourself, brothers. So here it is uh, when, when, when the saying is that if you throw a stone in a pack of the dogs, the one who barks loudest is the one who got the stone. So the one who may be barking right now is here, me. So I would say possibly I'm the biggest offender, Allahu alamu bi sawab. So I, I request you brothers and sisters all humbly to forgive me if you had anything directly from me or indirectly or with assumption that I may have said it in any way, please I request and if anybody is not willing to, you are most welcome to talk to me and I request the same from each and every brother and sister here to open their heart tonight and wash it of every whatever it may be which has poisoned your heart towards your brother and sister before you met them the first time you met how your reaction was totally open with no uh, no uh, theme behind it or misconceptions or any ideas let it be that way. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he used to say, do not come and tell me about others because I want to, when I go to you, that my heart is pure and clean. That's the way we should be and this is the way we should be willing to. If anybody here is not willing to forgive others, 
please do put your hands up so brothers can come and beg you for that. And if you do not raise your hand, it means you are among those who have forgiven others. So please, please we are not to be hypocrites here. We are not to be munafiqin here. If you do not forgive, raise your hands so we will come and beg you. If you do not raise your hands, it is a sign that you have forgiven all of us and we have forgiven you and wallahu shahidun ala dhalik and Allah bears witness to that which means that if you have not forgiven and you not raise your hand you will be responsible yawm al qiyamah believe me for that wa jazakum la karan so let us from our heart I give you a few seconds to concentrate on that that ya Allah I remember it or I don't but I forgive everyone and I regardless of whether I remember or not I need, Ya Allah, others to forgive me. Remember, as much as you need others to forgive you, uh, uh, as much as others they need to forgive you, you also need them to forgive you. And this, with, with this, we can start our life anew again. And there is nothing wrong in that, that every time we are reminded, and then we revamp our life, we uh, re-energize ourselves, and proceed again. What does Allah have don't ever think that this is some particular event or some incident happened in a day or two that I'm speaking here. No, this thing has been piling up for, for, for months and years. And um, I, I, I have mentioned it sometimes, but not so direct as it is today. So it is something very important, brothers. Don't go and say, oh, you may be the thing. Or don't think ever in your heart that you may be the thing, or that person or that person. Love Allah, that is not. You can put it all on me that I'm the only one who is the offender. And the rest of you are the victims. So take it as that if you want to. But be among those who are part and parcel of this masjid. As a family as it should be. And let us forgive everyone. Remember, when I recited in the second ayah, in the second Second raka'ah, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَ رَسْبَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى That those, those who, 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 who pure, pure, purify themselves, they are the ones who are going to win Yom Al-Qiyamah. They are the ones who are going to end up to, in the Jannah. Remember that, that we need to purify ourselves, otherwise we all are going to end up in the ditch in that hellfire from where there is no way out illa man rahimahu rabbuh I pray to Allah for the best of this dunya and hereafter I pray that may Allah forgive our sins and our shortcomings then may we meet the rest of the brothers and sisters with open heart and open a new new file in our life with a total new memory where everything has been deleted and we start new life again with forgiveness and with muhabba and rahma and friendliness and try to recapture the spirit of Islam, the way it was in the time of the Sahabas, Ridwanullah Ta'ala alayhim ajma'in, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi l'akhirati hasana, wa kina adab al-nar, Allahumma inna zalamna anfusana, wa illa b'takfi illana wa tarhamda, lana yakuda tabila al-khasirin, اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا رحمن الرحيم اللهم اللهم رب اغفر لنا خطايانا وذنوبنا اللهم رب اغفر لنا ذنوبنا التي علمناها والتي نسيناها والتي جهلناها عمل العملناها أم بالجهل ارتكبناها يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد والله إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته